Morning, everybody. I am Meg from Love and Stamps, and surprise, you're watching Maker Mornings with Meg. I have another project to share with you featuring the fabulous, beautiful balloon stamp set. <coughs> Excuse me. This stamp set is wonderful, but the real magic of it is the die set. So we are going to get into two of these dies, especially today. Well, actually, we're going to use a bunch of them, but two of these extra special dies today. Uh, and I'm going to give you some possibilities and ideas and just a sort of, uh, there's endless creativity included in this die set. So I promise it's going to be one that you will want to use both with the stamp set and also on its own. And we are making a faux buckle card today. So we've got fun on the front of the card. We've got some fun uh, edging to the card. We have a whole mess of coordinating things that all use the gorgeous new uh, beautiful balloons designer series paper this one here pretty patterns and ombres and so forth and uh yeah lots of great ideas so we're gonna get started and welcome to maker mornings with meg as usual so let me switch cameras here here we go all right i got some funky side lighting going on today because i'm trying to get my white balance sorted. And so I apologize if it's going back and forth. I think it'll be better for the next time I see you guys. But uh, new colors. So as I've mentioned before, this paper is a fabulous way to get going with the new um, Stampin' Up! Core colors. Chance to try them out, figure out which ones you love because we have many uh, of them included here. So we have uh, Fresh Freesia, which most of you know from a returning in color, Bubble Bath New, Berry Burst returning in color. Um, this color is Misty Moonlight, I think. Uh, this one is Blueberry Bushel. This is Azure Afternoon, also new. Uh, Last Lagoon. Um, Last Lagoon. Okay, now I'm getting these, now I'm getting them confused. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Lemon Lime Twist and Lemon Lolly. And so the great thing about these colors is that you can really uh, get in touch with the new colors and figure out which ones you love. Oh, this is Pretty Peacock and this is Last Lagoon. Sorry about that. And like we said, we're all good. So today is going to be a blue card. So we're doing Blueberry Bushel and Azure Afternoon. And then we're just going to use one ink pad and I'm going to show you how to get your most out of your single ink pad. So Lots of uh, coordination of things for today's project. So, hey, Elaine and Trish and Tanya, good to see you guys. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, get started here with our card base, and we're going to just go ahead and fold our blueberry bushel cardstock in half, and it's just a regular half sheet of cardstock. And we are going to give this uh, the benefit of some fabulous fringe. So let's jump in on this right here. So this is the fringe die, and there are uh, a number of things that you can do with this. It works great for adding uh, like layers of fringe to something just for fun. Um, you could use it for little hula skirts. You could use it uh, to make grass to go at the bottom of the card or for a scenery card. You can use it to make flowers if you've seen how those work. Um, where you cut this on a strip and roll those up. Probably coming up, I'll show that to you uh, sometime soon probably. But I'm gonna go ahead and use it to add fringe to our card. And I didn't trim the edge of my card yet, but I'm going to uh, put this uh, just pretty close to the edge. Um, and it's going to cut the fringe, but it's not going to release the edge, okay? Because it doesn't have an end cut to it, which actually means there are a lot of um, other flexible things you can do with it. but. Let's go ahead and pop it in here. Now you wanna make sure that your cardstock is straight. Um, smart idea to add a little um, length of washi tape there to just hold everything. And it's all gonna run through at one time. I told you the other day that I don't love to, okay, there's an ink pad under my stamp and cut and boss machine. That's not the best way to use it. Um, I don't love to have things run through at the same time, but with this, you don't have a ton of choice because you so you got to muscle over that bump there uh, because you have to to fit your card inside the, the machine so but let's take a look at this flip to the back side and there is our die now notice right here in the center I've told you before don't do bumps like this it didn't quite cut all the way through because this is a lot for it to manage all at one time um, and so we're gonna go ahead and run this through again and I might do just a teeny bit of an angle 
um, to get that or run back and forth just a couple times. There we go. And let's take a look at that and see if we've gotten that better cut. Yep, and there you can see that that is all very nicely cut now. So before you take your dies off of your cardstock, um, my point is to always look at your um, the back side of them and make sure that they have cut all the way through the way you want. So you can always run it through um, more easily as a repeat when it's still attached to the machine. So, All right, so now let's go ahead and trim that edge. Um, good morning, guys. Uh, oh yeah, Tanya says she loves this paper. I know. Wow, that ink pad's under everything this morning. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this straight even though I die cut it crooked, it's gonna disappear. So um, nobody's gonna notice in the end that, I, that the die was a little crooked. Probably I could have put two pieces of washi tape on there. But now we have this fabulous fringed edge. Now, when it first comes, it's pretty flat. I honestly feel like uh, it is happiest when it has some some dimension to it. So I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just, so what I do is I put the paper between my finger and the bone folder and I just run my bone folder across it. You want to be careful because you don't want to tear any of your fringe off, although honestly that would be kind of fun for texture. But I'm just going to curl this just a little bit. Oh, I didn't cut the edge of this fringe. I got it just attached still. Let's trim it off. No one's going to notice. All right, there we go. So I'm just bending some of those fibers. So now we have a super fun fringe card edge, right? Isn't that great? So this I'd say is the very basic way to use this fringe die. Um, and then there are a zillion other possibilities for it too. All right, I'm flinging cardstock here. All right, so let's go ahead and do some stamping on here. Um, I'm gonna bring in my scrap paper and get some of these layers out from underneath because on the back of this, I want to add uh, the Beautiful Balloon stamp set has this fabulous uh, streamer die where they're pre-turned like turned for you, so they're always exactly the pattern you want. So I've got this mounted. It takes a pretty big block for this one. I have mine on the eye block, and I am going to go ahead and ink it up in blueberry bushel. Now when you have a stamp that's relatively small for the size of the block, I always want to double check and look at the edges to make sure I haven't caught tons of ink on them um, because I really don't want to have a ton of um, extra like smudges on my thing. Although honestly, this card is probably one of the easiest ones to recover from smudges. I'm going to match up the bottom of my streamer here. Let's see, we'll pull it about like that. So it doesn't really have to match up at this bottom, but we'll pretend that, yeah, that for some reason I care. All right, I'm going to do that here at a slightly different angle. I'm going to add a little bit more down here at the bottom. And I think we need one more little kind of bit up here at the top. Make sure I get that swirl on there. All right, so now we have streamers and fringe. We have a party going. So Let's take a look at what else we can do with this uh, stamp set, what things we're going to layer on our card. Um, we're gonna add a faux buckle to this eventually, but let's go ahead and keep working on the front of our card. I have a piece of the designer series paper here. This is one of those um, sort of watercolor brushed papers uh, from the bright and beautiful um, designer series paper. <laughs> and on this side, it's got this fun confetti. And on this side, it's got uh, this nice um, even color wash. And so I'm gonna grab this triple balloon because I think this makes for a great background. And we're gonna go ahead and run this through. And through the magic of television, I have my triple balloon die all ready to go. So this is gonna fit here. And then we are going to um, do a little bit of stamping. I would like a balloon. And I'm gonna use this uh, sort of medium sized balloon here. But instead of using it full strength, so Here's our full strength version. Here is a second strength version. And here is a third stamping version. I kind of like this lightest one down here. And then that way I can use my you did it stamp, that's upside down, and go ahead and stamp right over the top of it and it's really easy to see. So on this one, it's okay, but obviously it would be very hard to see on the darkest one. And then of course there is a coordinating die to go ahead and cut this out. 
And through the magic of television, I have one right here. Okay. So now we have our you did it die. We have our triple balloon. Um, now, I've kind of said on this stamp set that I love the uh, possibilities, but I always want there to be strings on the balloons. So you can either use the uh, so a piece of ribbon twine or the um, one eighth inch metallic uh, ribbons go great with this uh, paper. They're from the other in colors, last year's in colors that are still continuing, but they, they're a perfect match for a lot of these colors and we're gonna get back to that. But you can also use the little string that's in the stamp set. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that. I'm gonna use uh, these as like a placement guide so that the strings will be attached to my balloons here once I do this. And I'm gonna flip some of them upside down so we don't have the exact same string placement for all of them. And there's a third balloon back here, so I'm gonna give that, there we go, one third little string on there. All right, so let's go ahead and attach these. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on a dimensional, but this one I'm going to attach flat. And I do love my multi-purpose liquid glue. I've updated the supply link for all of these supplies. Um, they are the supplies for all four of the um, Women's CS Monthly Tutorials for the month of May. And you get those tutorials uh, by placing any size order. You get them as a PDF um, with pictures and directions and cutting sizes and everything. Um, or you can purchase them in my Etsy shop once they're posted, which will be uh, later this week. Um, or if you're a Loven Stamps demonstrator, Loven Stamp Foles demonstrator, then you get those tutorials um, each month for free also. So if you, if you hadn't thought about joining my, joining my stamping demonstrator team, uh, definitely go for that. All right, so we need an embellishment or two on here. And I have this gorgeous sparkly paper. It is called Subtle Shimmer, and it comes in five colors in the package. Let me pull these out so you can adequately see how gorgeous they are. I think I've showed you this before. So there's one that's Berry Burst, there's one that's sort of Lost Lagoonish, one that is Bubble Bath, and one that is, um, I keep getting these two, Pretty Peacock, Lost Lagoon, Pretty Peacock-ish, and then this one that is Navy. And these are a great fit for this designer series paper. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Navy one, and it doesn't take a lot. Uh, necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to die cut with two more fab dies from here. We have the large and the small star. And of course, through the magic of television, I have those cut out for us. So we're going to hang on to this one for a little bit more, but I'm going to tuck this one behind and let's go ahead and give that one a Stampin' Dimensional too. So I'm going to pop a layer on here. Um, hey, Louise. Okay. So there we have that. And then we clearly need a little more bling for the front of this, and then we need the whole inside of our card here is coming. So I love these in-color dots. They are the other in-colors, the 2023 to 25, but I find that they are um, ideal to kind of go along with a lot of these new colors. So as I set my um, ink pad or set my pieces into my ink pad, I am going to remember um, our embellishments uh, create a focal point. So I'm gonna put one on each side of our little you did it banner there so that we have those kind of drawing attention to our greeting, okay? You don't wanna just place them willy-nilly. They, they have a function in your, in your card making. So um, use those embellishments, those bling points to create an extra uh, strength to your focal point. All right, so the inside of our card, we have a, a basic white layer. Here, let's do some stamping on here. Uh, I'm going to use this So Thrilled For You greeting, this guy right here. And this one is at a, you can either use it straight or honestly, I think it's really cute um, at a tilt. So I'm gonna use it at a tilt and you can either, um, so I'm gonna do it so that the lines are in the, in the scripty are vertical um, or you can use it so that the lines of the text are horizontal. And so either one is good. Um, honestly, you can get away with someplace in between. Oh, I was supposed to put that to the left. Okay, that's all right, we'll make it work. Um, but either, either one will look right. Uh, and then I'm gonna take our little balloon here and I'm gonna bring in our scrap paper back because um, I kinda wanna use this as a lighter color. So I'm gonna make sure this is pretty evenly inked and then stamp one, two, oh, I've got kind of a dark spot from uneven stamping because I've five layers under there. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at that again. Yep, we're doing pretty well. 
And I'm going to give this a stamp right there and then give it one of those fun balloon strings. I think this balloon string is my favorite uh, that I've seen in a long time. So, all right, but we want to um, do some sort of extra fun, right? We created this fun fringe card and then we have a stamped but not all that exciting inside of our card. So let us um, go ahead and grab another piece of designer series paper. So we have this one here and I'm going to go ahead and pop this on like so, so that when we open our card, we have that extra little um, little boost in there. And then we're gonna give it a big boost. So if you looked at the front of the card and you're like, oh, I'm gonna leave a, a holding spot. I've already, I've, this is, I've totally adopted this. Um, I'm always gonna leave a holding spot for when I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. So remember to uh, leave that little loop there on the side so that you have a place to hold your card stock when you're trying to pop it into your card. And then I'm gonna pop this strip on here also. Uh, Multi-purpose liquid glue is really my fave go-to. And that gives me the chance to just nudge a tiny bit because it doesn't grab instantly. So um, it's really flexible. So now we have some interest there, but I feel like this part right here needs something. And so we are going to add a faux buckle to our card. So you can add a full like buckle, um, you know, that goes all the way around your card. Um, or you can add one that looks like it is a buckle, um, but really just kind of hangs out here on the side and is just an opening like this. So this is another fantastic die from this stamp set, so or the die set. So we have the fringe, and then we also have um, this die, which you can use either with the little ribbon attachment point or without the ribbon attachment point. And, uh, Sneak peek, I'm gonna use that on the next time we have Maker Mornings with Meg, so watch for that on Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna show you a version as a tag, which is fun. Um, but let's go ahead and die cut this. I'm gonna use the Azure Afternoon cardstock. Um, I've managed to do all my stamping with one ink pad, but we're gonna grab a second color of cardstock. And if you don't have, um, if you don't wanna get all of the new cardstocks in individual packages, know that there is a core colors. It's linked in the video description for the supplies, but there is a core colors assortment pack so that you'd get basically all of these colors. Um, I think it's two sheets of each of the 11 new colors and it gives you a chance to really see which ones you think you'll use the most. Uh, and then you can go ahead and you know get full packages of those. But die cut through the magic of television, have this piece right here. Now, um, we clearly are going to need to put something into that uh, die or that spot there. But let's look at this here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of place this where I want and then make a sort of, um, use my finger to just sort of hold it in place. And then I'm gonna come in here because um, I want to use my scoring uh, tool here. I don't wanna just fold this because I don't want it to um, accidentally leave a crease. So I'm gonna bring that down. Remember, of the two blades, the lighter one is the scoring, the darker one is the cutting. And I always think of that as this is the dark one, it's like the heaviest, and so it's serious business and it's gonna cut through. This is sort of like the light one. So it's just gonna lightly score across there. All right, so now we have that score and I probably could have done it a little later even, but it'll be fine. And that is going to fold for us. But before I fold it, I'm gonna go ahead and add our other greeting, which lots of celebration words in here. Um, they're not just birthdays. Um, they could be for retirement, for graduation. This will be a graduation card. Uh, our school colors are orange and blue, so probably I should have put some uh, put some orange in here somewhere, but I think I think it works as a blue card too. All right, so now I'm just gonna hold that around there, get an eye for where I want it. I'm gonna come back and you have three choices of adhesive here. You have multi-purpose liquid glue, you have tear tape, which is the roll of, I'm almost out, tear tape like this, um, or you have seal plus, which is again, the darker color one, the more serious heavy duty. Um, would all be good choices for this. I am gonna pick multi-purpose liquid glue. And the reason is because I like to be able to shift things just a tiny bit, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna throw that a little bit there, yikes. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop this on and hinge that across. And then remember with multi-purpose liquid glue, it doesn't grab instantly, so that's a plus but it means um, that you do have to just give it an extra second to um, think about grabbing there. All right. 
Okay, there we go. And now we can add our uh, ribbon to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull um, Starry Sky. Is the Starry Sky? The Starry Sky or um, the uh, Orchid Oasis. Either one are great um, for this. And I'm gonna put the ribbon through here. Now, this ribbon is not very strong on its own. It's not um, like a super wide ribbon. So I'm going to double it. Okay, that's my favorite trick for using, um, I don't know, like a wimpy ribbon in a situation where you want it to have more power. And so I'm gonna treat those two as if they're one. I'm gonna pop the folded center through my tab here and open that up again. And I'm gonna bring the open ends through. And I would lift this closer to the camera, but uh, I can't hold it in the middle of the air and still manage it, so, okay. There we go, and then pull that back through. So now we have that um, tab like that. Now, I'm gonna take the ends and then I'm gonna clip them. I think these got, well, you know what? I think, they, I think they're a little bit long. Maybe I'll trim just a little, but maybe not. They're kind of like fun and fringy and they kind of go along with the fringe and the balloon and so forth. Um, but we need a little bit more on here because we want this to share in our greeting. And right now this is pretty strong, but this is interesting. So it's kind of like, wait, what, what am I looking at? Um, so I want this to be really strong and I'm gonna bring in one more dot. I'll use that third one there and pop this down here. And we have that extra star. And we're gonna pop this star on here also. Okay, so let's grab, um, I need a Stampin' Dimensional, but I need it to fit on there without overlapping to the back. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a mini dimensional here and pop it right here. So I don't have to worry about it over, I, if I put it on the back of the star, it could accidentally seal our card shut. So. This way I know we will not have sealed our card set. So there is a really fun tag front card with our fun greeting on the inside, extra interest, and a really great uh, focal point here that's kind of shared with our you did it and yay you, okay? So hope you guys uh, are enjoying these balloon projects. Um, like I've said, uh, it takes a lot for me to, to say, yes, I'm going to add a new floral or a new balloon set to my stamping library. But this one with the coordinating dies and all of these extra pieces and the extra, oh, we haven't even gotten to this confetti die, um, stars, balloons. They're just, a, there's a lot here. Um, that gives you a lot of plus possibilities and flexibility for all kinds of projects, not even just like using with the balloon stamp set itself. So lots of options. Um, oh, I've been missing comments, sorry. Oh yes, Trish um, said that the fringe die would be great for pinata favors. And uh, yeah, the faux buckle, um, Sue said, the faux buckle goes great on the um, all kinds of cards. Uh, it's just a nice accent. You can use it on pretty much anything. I often like to use it with an, an inner um, front card, inner cut front card, like a short front layer because then you can see to the inside. It just like adds some extra interest to this area here um, as a bonus there. And Terry, I'm glad you like the analogy on the blades and remembering which one is the cutting, which one's the, um, which one cuts and which one scores. So all right, let's see. Um, I have another version of this card that I will show you. This one is uh, the blues version. This one is berry burst and uh, bubble bath version like that and opens to the center like so and gives you um, all kinds of possibilities. But same designer series paper, same supplies. Um, the link in the video description has all the supplies for both of these cards. So they're um, kind of redundant. You could make both of these with the same packages of paper and the same inks and so forth. So, all right, everyone. Well, um, I can't believe that it is Friday already. Uh, I do not know how that, no, it's not Friday. Whew, it's not Friday already. It's pre-Friday already. Um, I don't know how we got to this point in the week. It is blazing along. Uh, but I hope that you guys have great plans for your weekend and that you'll have a chance to do some crafting. Um, maybe uh, make some faux buckle cards, add some faux buckles to things that you uh, already have planned. You focus there. Oh, well, you've seen it. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you are waiting on a Love and Stamps paper share, designer series paper share, I have them almost ready to go. So watch for those to um, be in the mail uh, a week early, week and a week early. Uh, it's like records. And uh, I will um, 
be excited for you guys to see what kind of cards you make and so forth. So uh, have a wonderful pre-Friday um, on this Thursday and uh, enjoy your weekend. And I will be back on Tuesday with another Maker Mornings with Meg. So happy stamping, everybody. And thanks for joining me this morning.